Okie dokie, let's catch some bass today. Hey! I love that I wasn't recording any of that. There's some better audio for you guys. Okay, apologize about that. What I was saying was, I switched crankbaits, and now I'm gonna catch one so I look like a genius. Okay. Too much stinking goop. Snot grass. You know why they call it snot grass? Because it's snot grass, that's for sure. It is a mixture of doo doo and boogers. Welcome to TRF, folks. Let's catch some fish. There's one. Yeah, finally. Finally. I think it's a big one, folks. I think it's a big one. It has not come up yet. Oh, oh no. Not big. I forgot him. Oh, oh, there he goes. Let's power pull down. Is this a bass or a catfish? It's a bass. It's a bass. I've got him like underneath the belly. Ugh. There we go. My first one of the day. Taking me quite a while. Very pretty fish. He's got like all sorts of black spots on him. But I uh, got him on the Strike King spinnerbait. Kind of customized it last night. Took off the trailer hook, put a swim bait on, put the trailer hook back on. First one of the day. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to try to explain to you guys a little bit about winter cold fronts. We're going to be fishing around multi-million dollar mansions and hopefully catching fish much bigger than this. This is just the, uh, the first one of the day. Good three pounder to start. But it is a beautiful lake. The lake is drawn down. I talked about that in my last video. If you guys did not see it, click up here in this corner. But uh, I'm happy with this start. Let's talk about it. So the conditions we have today are a nice wintry day in Texas. It is 65 degrees outside and it is January 9th, which definitely should not be the case. It should not be this warm in Texas. We have like a southern warm front coming in. We usually have in Texas, you know, quite a lot of cold, cold fronts that, that blow through and, and bring that water temperature down, you know, into the 50s. Right now, water temp is 56. Usually the water temp gets down to like 50, 51. And so these fish right now, I feel like are getting ready for the pre-spawn. These fish have moved up shallow. We're catching them on chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, and, and flipping docks with a jig. So I want to talk a little bit about conditions today and how you have to let the conditions dictate where you fish. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a winter warm front. You know, what, what you do when in the winter you have, uh, you know, warm weather that comes kind of unexpectedly and you still have to go fishing, what should you do? And so in this video, we're going to talk about that. Now the first thing to look for in terms of fishing during a winter warm front is something that can retain heat. Bass in this time of the year in the winter are, are wanting to be shallow, they're wanting to spawn, and in order for that to happen they need the water to warm up and they need their, the females especially, they need their physical bodies to warm up. And the best way to do that is to put their belly up against something or underneath something that is radiating the heat from the sun. And the two things that are most often known for as retaining heat are the undersides of those black floating docks, but most often rocks. Rocks are one of God's creations that just hold heat really dang well. And so that is going to be the first thing that fish are going to flock to when that you have one of those winter warm fronts. And a great way to catch them is on a jerk bait, a crank bait. Uh, but if you're in Texas like this, when the water doesn't really get that cold, bass will actually move into more of a pre-spawn pattern, not necessarily just a winter time. So let me give an example of that. Let's say you are in Illinois. Uh, or, or Wisconsin or something, and you have a winter cold front come in March or April, and it gets those fish, you know, up shallower, but they're still not gonna be caught on things like a chatterbait, a spinnerbait, a swim jig, that kind of stuff, because your water temperature is, is still really, really cold. Those fish are not quite in that type of mood yet. But down here in Texas in the south, when you have a warm front, it might bump the water from 52 to 57, and that is enough to get those fish eating your standard pre-spawn lures, like a spinnerbait and a chatterbait, as I've been doing the last two days. Just realized the lighting changed, apologize about that. The sun has popped out. What do you know? Oh man, it's getting bright now. I need my sunnies on. And speaking of the huge houses, the reasoning why I'm fishing by mega mansions, I will explain in a second. After I catch one, gosh dang it. Now the reasoning why I love to fish around big time you know, multi-million dollar houses like these houses on Lake LBJ is because these homeowners want to protect 
their shoreline from erosion. And so most times, especially on this lake, Lake LBJ, the homeowners will put down big chunk rocks, big pieces of rock, uh, you know, gravel, gravel bars, uh, and basically load it up against their retaining wall. That way there's kind of a double block against any sort of erosion. And so that can just lead to a whole lot of rock in one area that really can congregate fish during these colder months when you have a warm front like this. And so we had some warm rain last night. We had some sun poke out yesterday and a little bit today. And these fish right now are gonna be sucked up against these banks where there's rock. And there's not gonna be rock everywhere. You know, there's parts of this lake that don't have the big expensive houses. And so those homeowners usually don't put lots of gravel farther into the water. They don't put lots of riprap rocks. But homeowners like this do, and uh, that's why there's fish here. Should be at least. Oh my gosh, I've got one! Ha <laughs> ha Oh, and it's a big one! And it's a big one! Let's go! Let's go! I knew it! What did I tell you guys? I told you they'd be here, and they were. I'm not a liar. Oh baby, come on, come on! Bring it up in this boat. Bring it up in this boat. Yes, sir. Not a big one, but it's definitely a nice over three pounder. And I'll take it. Just like I was talking about, these fish need to be sucked up against the rocks to retain that heat. Got a nice female here, getting herself ready to spawn here in a few months. And uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, these fish want to be hot. And that's a hottie right there. That's a hottie toddy. Gosh darn almighty. Woo! And we have power pole down right here. This is exactly why you got the 10 foot poles. So this pole could be shallower. That one could be deeper. And we're gonna hop back up here, get ourselves another cast. Right along the multi-million dollar houses. That, I mean, these houses aren't as nice, but their yards and properties are huge. I would definitely take one of these if I was presented the opportunity. There's one, boom, got him, got him, got him, got him. Bring it on in up here, yes. <laughs> Hit a little main lake rock bar here. Got myself a little bass on the Colorado spinnerbait. And these bass have like sharp teeth right now. And I know on, on my videos I've said before what that means. I was probably making it up. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what sharp mouths means. I think it means they're eating something I don't know if it means they're eating bait fish or crawfish. Y'all comment below whatever that means. But their, their mouths were sharp, that's for sure. Oh, I've got one. Hey, look at that. <laughs> My first crankbait fish of the, of the trip. Warming itself on some rocks. And that thing is like healthy. He barely nipped at it right at the trolling motor, man. I'm gonna use pliers because I'm not trying to be a dummy dumb today. Get a hook in my finger. There we go. All right. Hey, not a big one, but like the proportions on that fish are crazy. I think it's fat and he's pooping. Get out of my boat. I don't like pooping bass. I had a bad experience one time. I made my way all the way up the river and I'm like literally cranking the very, very top portion of the Colorado River. Gonna see if there's any more fish up here. I know this area receives a ton of pressure when the lake is drawn down like this, but maybe for some reason the fish are just stacked up here and that's why it receives more pressure. So we'll see. Gonna keep cranking. Keep all that cranking going. Well, boys and girls, that brings an end to another beautiful day out here on the lake. It has definitely been a while since I've really fished hard and I'm excited for this January, February, March that I'm just gonna hit it as harder than I ever have. I'm determined to catch a 10 pound bass. I'm determined to catch 30 pounds on a public body of water and five fish. It's gonna happen this spring. I'm very, very uh, convinced it's gonna happen. I'm gonna make it happen. And I'm gonna have you guys along for the journey with me. So if you guys are not subscribers to the Team TRF, click that subscribe button, turn post notifications on. And if you guys are on the desktop version of YouTube, make sure you guys bookmark the page, check back three times a week. I've got three brand new videos every single week. And trust me, you guys are not gonna wanna miss all the videos I have this spring. 
spring. I've got big bass planned. I've got some awesome travels planned. And I just, I just can't wait. I'm excited to travel the country in this boat and uh, catch some big old donks for you. So we'll see you guys next time. Hello!